Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Accessible Globe TV. Around 10 years ago, I was given a rare and privileged opportunity to speak to Sir Frank Williams, the founder of the Williams Formula One team, specifically about his life with disability. It's something that Frank rarely focused on, and in fact, I don't think he particularly liked to focus on his disability, and therefore, any discussions with him about it, as I said, are quite rare. The day it happened, I was fairly nervous myself, and I think it was pretty evident that it took a while to get going. Some of the questions at the beginning of the interview were a little bit stilted in the answers, but as we went along further, Sir Frank opened up and we had a great time just having a chat. Why don't we have a look at the interview right now? This is a very, very exciting day for me because I've been a motor racing fan for all my life, pretty much. And I am at the Williams Formula One factory with none other than Sir Frank Williams. Thank you for the interview, Sir Frank. There's so many things that I've always wanted to ask you. This is perhaps a little different interview in the sense that this is a, a disability sort of thing, which is unusual. You don't talk about it very often. So, so we're grateful for that. The first question that comes to my mind is, you're a very competitive man all your life. So when, when you became disabled, did, do you compete with your disability or do you live with it? You have to live with it. There's no way you can get around it. You have to live with it and yep. adapt to it. And you, There's lots of other people who are always worse off. So you never really feel sorry for yourself. And people like me who have gone before me, you can learn from them an enormous amount, which is what I've done. So when you say people like you have, who have gone before you, you've probably seen in motor racing over the years that people that have actually become injured through the sport. Did any of those particularly mm. give you inspiration in your own time? No, I can truthfully say not particularly, but there's one man who comes to mind who is not a motor racing man. His name is Rainer Koshal. He makes wheelchairs. And he is a true, he's more injured than I am, but can, he makes... He's like an Olympic athlete as far as I'm concerned compared to me. He just got off his chair and did things wrong. Well, he still needs his chair, but he's built up a substantial wheelchair business. He gets around the world. He's quite an inspiration. Okay, and he, he, he does some crazy things, you were telling me. Very crazy things, yeah, but... Uh, More no, crazy than running a Formula One? No, that's, that's pretty safe in physical terms. <laughs> Risky financially sometimes, but... No, Rainer just gets around the world and breaks all the rules. I love that sort of thing. Well, we've, bro we've all broken rules. <laughs> I'm still sure you're still breaking some every now and again. When, 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 the, when, the, when the accident happened, they tell me you never once gave up the thought of running Williams or doing what you do. Is that true? Well, it's not, why should I have been um, thinking after that? It's true. It's true. I didn't bother. You know, I just wanted to get on and get back to work. It was, that's what set, not saved me at all, but it made my recovery more uh, more acceptable as far as I had an objective, I had a target, something I needed to get back to, and that's what I did. The thing that I often wonder is, mm. before before your accident, you were seen as a very driven and mm. very uh, forthright sort of a person. After your accident, you're seen exactly the same. Has has it changed you in any way, really? Has it has it made any? Well, I'm not the sort of person who looks in the mirror and thinks about what I look like or what I th how I think. I mean, motor racing or Formula One is inspirational. I'm very fortunate to find myself in it and still find myself in it. And you certainly get you out of bed every day to get to work is always full of challenges. So one of the things that, for me, speaking from my disability and talking to many people over the years, they say an accident or an injury takes away a lot of things from you but sometimes it gives you something back, a perspective or an outlook or just different things. Has it given you anything back? I have really thought about that. I mean, I just can only repeat that I'm very involved in this business. Uh, there's some wonderful little work, people who work here. It's a pleasure to have them around. They make a big difference to the success of the business. And to be part of that group really is, for me, inspirational and enjoyable and exciting. I mean, Formula One is a very exciting business. You can't get much more exciting, I don't think. Right so on. really, it was just non-stop, straight down the line, all the way. A few wiggles on the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
you've endorsed, I think, kart racing for people with with uh, disabilities mm. uh, uh, recently or in the last couple of years. Do you see ever a, a possibility of perhaps a, a series of racing with hand controls for people that, do you think yeah. that would ever work? It could work, yeah, sure. Obviously, uh, it might be frowned upon by some people, but uh, if a bunch of young people, and not so young people, wanted to race against each other in go-karts that were adapted for them, why shouldn't they? Uh, wh why do you think it would be frowned upon? It's not politically correct? Because it might be. I mean, it might just, yeah. Then you, you easily cause yourself more injury, more of a burden on the state and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, these, guys, think, these guys have got to have a life, you know. I mean, everybody who gets into a racing car has the, has the possibility mm. of injury. That's right. I yeah. mean, if someone with... With, with an injury already wants to hop in and enjoy themselves, they should have exactly the same right to do Absolutely so. Absolutely right. I know I would love to, yeah, to, sure. to even be in a car, and some people are using hand-controlled sure. cars yeah. already. I think Alex Zanardi uses them, and I believe uh, Lewis Hamilton's brother is even doing yeah, some that's right. racing this year. So eventually it's beginning to happen, which is the important thing. Um, you have done an awful lot with Save the Children over the years, I believe. Not in the recent past, but before that, yeah, when I was able-bodied, yeah. yes. And uh, I would imagine that, that you get a lot of people wanting you to get involved in things with disability, uh, and you do what you can, I know that. But is it a little bit the same as it is for me, that you want to just focus on, do what you can for people, but just focus on just living and doing things, rather than put a focus on disability as such in your life? I think I'm far more selfish than you are. Well, I, I wouldn't say all I care about is myself and my family. I care about this business. I have quite a lot of responsibilities, but I'm, I'm not particularly outward looking. Into Formula One, yes, but that's about as far as it goes. So, Frank, I know that you've got a lot of accolades for, for doing things that aren't selfish, and I know that you don't do everything. I mean, you have to be focused. You're doing a fairly big job here. But um, I think that uh, from the point of view of uh, children, I've spoken to a lot of children with disability, and they love the fact that you run a Formula One team. They love the fact that you're still the boss and, that, and you give them encouragement that they can do something like that with their life. What would you say to a, a newly injured young child or something? What would your advice be to them? There is actually a lot more to life than you've discovered yet. There's just you know, hold your eyes open and be prepared. And also you must look for opportunity because it won't always be given to you. You've got to go and fight for it. But there's still a lot that can be done. A great it's, deal. It's always the opportunities that you make for yourself, isn't it? If you want to sit in the chair and stay there, that's where you're going to be in 20 years' time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so give, tell them that, and, and they can. They can run a company like this, correct? They can do whatever they want. Maybe this part has to be edited, but there are probably more serious matters that can happen to a human being than breaking your neck. I mean, I would have thought to be blind it must be a hundred times worse. I don't know whether should you should say that or not. On no, the, I think that's an excellent oh my, thing to say. Everybody has their own perception of their own disability. Yeah. I mean, mm. it, the, the interesting question that I, I, I said I was not going to ask you when I come here because it's a standard question, but now I find myself changing my mind, mm. is that mm. the, the old question comes up every time I, I, I'm with people, of, are you better off to have your injury before uh, when you're born? Like I was born with my disability and, and mm. you unfortunately received yours a little later on and, and the question is uh, which is better I mean I would give an arm and a leg so to speak if you'll pardon the pun to uh, to get in a car and race or walk yeah. along a beach whereas you probably truly know what you're what you've lost what what would you think would you would you change it or you I believe, I believe in living now and having to pay later the later you have to have an injury the better with I'm sure the the, later, the, yep. the I've had a great life so and, and, and you're still life. enjoying I'm life I'm still enjoying it very much and you're yeah. not enjoying it much less or too busy too busy and spinal cord injury research still offers hope to a lot of people do you ever think about that or, or not really I don't think about it a great deal but um, I know a lot of money is being spent on it and some clever people on it We'll get there in the end of that, in my opinion, there's no doubt. Well, so Frank, I really appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to give us a little insight into to what it's been like for you, because we're all, in some ways, part of a, a very strange family. Uh, and, and I really appreciate the time you've given us and the frankness with which you've spoken, if you'll pardon the pun. My pleasure, it's easy. Thank you very good much, and good luck in every year with Formula One. I shall watch with yeah, interest. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Good luck to you too. Thanks very much. That, of course, is Sir Frank Williams. And uh, 
it's been a real um, bucket list day for me, if you will, to actually be at a Formula One factory and talk to someone that has inspired me. It's embarrassing to, to say in front of Frank, but it's true. It's a big day for me. And uh, let's just all support Williams, get behind them, and yeah. hope that we can win another world championship. Well, as I said, we were very, very privileged to be able to uh, conduct that interview with Sir Frank Williams. Uh, we do apologise that the quality of the film is a, a little bit, a little bit under par. We actually thought we had lost the footage, but we found some, and we're very happy to show it to you today. I also uh, will say that Patrick Head, who was the chief engineer for Williams at the time, said that he didn't believe Sir Frank would give an interview specifically on disability. So again, we're very, very grateful. Also, thanks go out to David Hunt, who was the brother of the world champion James, James Hunt, who helped us organise that interview with Sir Frank Williams. A wonderful day for me, one that I'll never forget. Well, that's basically it for today. Before we go, let's have a look at some of the people who have supported us and if you're about to sign off please subscribe to our channel also because uh, we need subscriptions we need to to grow our channel and we want to bring more entertainment to everyone the people who are looking after us hello world harvey bay who are helping us with our accessible tours all over the world you can book through them i owe my automatic housing so opening doors opening windows all that sort of thing totally mobile who rent and sell Mobility Equipment, Simple Solutions, who are just wonderful people who look after everybody with disabilities. And of course, the Australian Government's NDIS, without which I would have a great deal of difficulty making these programs because they give me the support I need to be able to do them. Thank you very much for watching today. We'll be back in a few days with another program. And until then, we just want to say thank you very much to Frank Williams. Rest in peace, and it was an honour to know you. Thank you.